I've always had a passion for being around and learning about animals. When I was younger, going to zoos and animal parks was always a part of my life. I wanted to share my passion with family and friends, so I started working with people that loved animals as much as I did, and my YouTube channel was born. Welcome back to my Animal Life Beauty Series. Today I'm at the Breezy Zoo, and may you introduce yourselves? Hi, I'm Elena. I'm Mariah. Hi, I'm Ruby. And what can you tell us about the Eastern Hellbender? Um, well, the Eastern Hellbender is the largest uh, aquatic salamander in the United States. Um, the longest recorded one is 29 inches, and, but it's typically between 12 and 15. Um, they uh, live on the bottom, uh, typically in the bottom streams uh, from New York up to uh, Alabama. And they eat 95% crayfish. Here at the zoo, we feed them something a little different. We usually feed them cookies, other shrimp, and things like that. But mostly crustaceans. Um, also, what's really interesting about the hellbender is, as Ruby mentioned, you can usually find them on the bottom of streams and any water regions. But when they do actually want to come to the surface, the underside of the hellbender is um, lightly colored compared to the top. So then that's a way to trick predators into thinking when they're looking above. It's just sunlight. You can't actually see the animal that's above them. And then the top coat of the hellbender is that muddy, gritty kind of combination of different um, brown tones so that when they're on the bottom of the um, shore, other predators and other organisms can't really distinguish them. It's like a set of camouflage. They kind of have these lasagna ridges and that helps them absorb the oxygen in the water. They're one of the animals that doesn't really have to go to the surface to absorb oxygen. They kind of just absorb it through the water as well as their toes are like really good at gripping so they really grip the ground so they kind of don't like the water doesn't push them away they can like grip and grab their food as well as when they eat they kind of do what whales do which is kind of they open their mouths and like gulp lots of water as well as soon as they get their prey they like bite down and won't let it go and then they kind of swallow it from there. And hellbenders do have lungs they just don't use them that often. It, they actually did a study where a hellbender had its lungs surgically removed but it was actually perfectly fine to survive in water without that organ. What other avenues does it have to survive in creeks and waterways? Well, there's kind of these like seams on the bottom of the hellbender and actually on the top along its head and underneath here. Scientists aren't specifically sure what the purpose of them are yet because there haven't been that many studies done on the hellbender but it's kind of been hypothesized that they're used to sense vibrations so it's an easy way for them to kind of find their prey because they have such small eyes their eyes are kind of insignificant in a way because they don't use their eyesight to find their prey they usually use that great sense of smell but um, they believe that those seams along the top and the bottom of the hellbender's head actually can be utilized as well what kind of animals would try to eat or attack a hellbender? Oh, when they're little, they're only like five or six inches, so like more like fish. But then as they grow to be like the 12 to 15 inches, the fish don't really bother them as much because that's not what their main source of food is. Also, similar to amphibians, they are very sensitive to the quality of water in which they call home. So specifically like salinity levels, they need very oxygenated water. So if um, due to pollution, that could be a very big factor in their population. And then also to people in general, um, because uh, people aren't a fan of them. Um, there are some not so great names that they call them. Um, and people kind of think of them as trash sometimes too. What are some of these bad names that you're talking about for the Hellbender? Uh, um, a few of them are like Mud Devil, Devil Dog. Um, I heard Grampus, Mud Puppies, Snot Otter. Snot Otter. Probably more than that too. Really like slime. That's because of their like slime that they have, and that's like to help them eat as well. And that slime's not really poisonous, but it's that's why they like the slime. And also, an interesting thing about the slime is they believe that the slime can have antibiotic properties. So I think they're trying to do experiments with that to see if potentially um, they can use that slime with it. What are the other cool facts about the hellbender? One cool fact is that um, they can actually regrow their limbs. If they uh, do lose a limb, they're able to uh, regenerate it. Um, so they are the only vertebrate that can regrow their limbs, meaning they're the only um, animal that has a backbone that can do that. 
So not only like lizards with the tail. Um, there was actually an interesting um, experience where a hellbender was infected with a disease, so it was separated from the other hellbender colony, and then the limb, um, the leg was amputated to clear out that disease, and then the limb grew back. What are some of your favorite things about this uh, species of amphibian? I just think it looks really cool, especially too with the fact that it has these really small eyes at the front of its head that really aren't helpful because it's a nocturnal animal so it focuses so much on other senses to um, find its prey at night. Um, sometimes we have problems with our hellbenders because they don't want to be too active during the day, mm -hmm. which is at night, but we just adjust that schedule a little bit. Also like the camouflage that they like blend in very well with their surroundings as well as like, how they can grip the ground and not like go against the current but kind of like move with the ground over. And now can we see the tank you have for your hellbenders here? And what can you tell us about this tank you have here? Okay, so our tank is has full of aerators and that's like to prevent oxygen in the water for these guys because these guys need oxygen because they're in the whole water as well as they're used to, we try to make it as most close to a riverbed as possible because that's where they usually live on like the rocky bottoms as well as they're trying to blend in with their surroundings too. So we try to make the surroundings as close to their color because that's what they're used to in the wild. Well, thank you for talking about the tank. And if you guys enjoyed this week's episode, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to the channel, and also check out my Instagram, at Kosher. And as always, I'll see you next week.